Hi everybody and welcome back to the Paperless Movement YouTube channel. I'm Tom Solid and today we will look at Note Plan 3. So I think let's just open it up and see what we get there. So as you can see on their website, Note Plan is only available on the App Store and on Mac App Store. So this is another application that is only for the Apple universe, which can be a good thing because it works very well on all the Apple devices. However, if you want to access your information on other devices like uh, Windows Desktop, you have no chance to do so and this is really a downside of these types of applications but it promises a lot of great features like bi-directional linking so we have backlinks and we have nested tagging and we have tasks and time blocking and so on so on your app store we see already that it is available on mac iphone and ipad well the ratings are okay so let's see what we will get so you can download it for free and there we are that's what we see when we open it up for the first time it's a calendar driven note taking and that's a really interesting approach here because we see our notes on the calendar and we can block time this way so i'm really looking forward to dive deeper into this now so we skip the sign up here okay and we already presented with the pricing before even joining but we can start a free trial here so start your free trial now i always appreciate it if this is possible we will start with with the monthly plan and now allow access we need to get access to our apple calendar to our reminders and there we are so we have a nice overlay tutorial here and it looks pretty similar for example like uh, notion we always have the sidebar here or like in evernote where we have the text down there we have the smart folders we have notes and we have some daily notes week review so this is more like i would say to do is like or the daily notes in rome research we have here a sample note so let's see where this is hidden. Okay, it seems that this is the sample note. There's a daily note that is already written. And now I want to know where I can access this later on. That's interesting. So this means that those notes live actually on those days. Okay, let's write down something on January the 6th. So command L is a task. So I have a task here and I like it that it is represented here. Do you see this dot here? So I see there's an open task and as soon as I tick this off, this task is finished and you see it reflected in here. I like that. So this means I, I will see all my open tasks in here. So now it would be interesting to see if we can add times to the task. I can move the task to today, move to tomorrow, complete task, cancel task. So now tell me that you actually have the option to search for tasks. So we have go to go to the review section and here we go. We have all tasks, no tasks. So those are tasks inside a note. And this means they are not connected to any day. Okay, but I could certainly go here now and say move to today. So we have a task here and you see there is a date connected to this task inside the note. So I can click here and I will jump to this note day and we see it's referenced we see that this date is referenced in this note in this task this is really nice that's something we have in Rome research as well and you see here again on the 24th November there's this open task and we are already in January obviously so when we go to all tasks here it is great that we see that there are still open tasks in November I like that so we have all tasks we have no tasks which are tasks that are in the notes we have overdue tasks and we have upcoming tasks which are the ones we just added on the 27th of January and I always can click here and it will jump to the task I can say move to today and move to today and I can jump to today see and now we have the task here but this task is mentioned in this day it is a bit is a bit strange but I like the fact that we can actually mention those tasks when they move away they don't move out of the note from this day they actually move to this date and stay referenced on the previous day so you see it's cross-linked I really like this approach so here we see a weekly overview of all our that's more like in Rome research now we could say okay on Monday we did this and we did this and on Tuesday we did this we also have the week here and there we can add events so this means this will be a proper event in here and now when I jump to the state we see the event reflected in here you can also make this bigger 
or we can close it completely. I like that. And delete the event, make it repeat. See, this is my Apple calendar. And uh, here's the event that we just added in Node Plan 3. So this really is great. Okay, so whatever we add here, it will come up in our calendar. That's great. We also can set a reminder and choose the list there. See, now we have a reminder in here. We choose today. Now it's gone. When we click on top here, we will jump to today. And you see here is our reminder and this red line is actually just showing the, the time. See, that's the actual time and that's our reminder. So now when we open up the reminders, so in the reminders, now we see here to do list, make video today. So this means I can manage everything inside Note Plan, like my calendar and my reminder. And I can use then the Apple calendar and the reminder to show this stuff on my Apple Watch and on my widgets, on my iPhone and so on. This is really great. This also means whenever I add a reminder using Siri, for example, then it will be added here. See, it is just in real time. So I can add a time, see, and now we jump here. And that's our reminder right here. This is awesome. I have to tell you, this is awesome. But as I know, this goes further. So we can actually mention stuff. So whenever we start to mention something, see what happens then we have two mentions and it adds automatically these mentions down here, just in real time. So what this means, whenever I click on Rome Research, I see all the mentions of Free Rome Research. The same goes for Node Plan 3. So I really can see how this is building up over time. And now the interesting thing is, what is the difference between hashtag and mention? So Node Plan actually says that we have a difference between people, which is the mention, and hashtags, which is some subjects. So as we can see here on the site already, we have a client mention and in this client we have the company and in the company we have this person. So that's interesting. So this means when we go to the daily notes, we start to mention client, it comes up and I see already what's there. So I could select this and keep writing. And this means whenever I go to client, I should see here, yeah, it's coming up, I see all the client stuff. Then I can narrow it down by the company and then I can go further down into detail to only see the mentions by then. So let's put this further, like client Acme, and then we add a new name. And now we have exactly this. We go here to the company and now we see both Jim and Dan mentioned. If we go to Jim, we only see this line Jim. If we go to Dan, we only see this line Dan. That is really an interesting approach. Again, I don't see the big difference between hashtags and mentions because I could do client, Acme, Jim, client, Acme, Dan. And now we have the same down here. So it seems that hashtags and mentions work the same way. I would have expected that mentions actually work like in Rome Research, mentioning pages. So I wonder now how I actually can refer to other pages. And this works as well. Like in Rome Research, you just make double brackets and then you see the pages coming up. So let's create a new page, enter, and now we can click on this and you see now here's a new page. It is right here, the page. And we can start writing and we see already the reference of this page on January the 4th and we can keep adding information there and we see it here on the side. Here down there we can just add a new folder and there we can put the page in and now we have a nested page. And let's see if we can do sub pages. See the page is coming up but it is not automatically adding it to the new page. See it's just disconnected from the other things. So I need to take it and all I can do is I can put it to a folder but we don't see any proper structure going on, okay? Also, I just nested this page into the new page. It's not nested here. It makes sense because obviously when I can also refer here to welcome page. So this is all about backlinking. So it is not really necessary to have this uh, hierarchy on the side at all, in my opinion, because it works much more like Rome Research. So I think it would be better to have something like favorites that I can just 
tag some pages that I consistently visit, but it seems that's not a thing. And we have smart folders here, and these smart folders seems to be consistent as well. We can't create our own smart folders as it seems, but I can create subfolders. So I can put this folder in here and I know I can put my new page in the subfolder. So we can create subfolders, that's at least something. And we can, it seems we can create as many as we like. I don't know what the limit is, but we can create subfolders. So with this is the way we can create projects and place the pages accordingly. But with backlinking, I think it will be much easier to navigate through this. So what's really missing here is a place for favorites. So of course I could just create hashtags in the beginning, always mentioning favorite. And this way we could access these pages all the time. See favorite and now we have only the pages with favorite in it. And um, this is a bit of a workaround, but again, I would really like, for example, when I look at this, it reminds me a lot of Todoist as well. I would like to have some favorites that I can just tag on top, some favorite hashtags and so on, because you see, I cannot reorganize these hashtags. They stay alphabetically. So uh, this is a uh, room for improvement. But now let's switch to the iPad version and see how it looks there. So we see already the rating is not as good here. Yeah? So it should recognize actually here restore purchase. So as we already bought it on the Mac, see it recognized that I have this. I have to allow access again to my calendar and my reminders and allow sending notifications. And now it's downloading our information. And there we are. See, there's this task that I already created. I can click on here. So it seems that the organization is different. So I can click here. I have full screen. I always like this distraction free type of, of screen. Now we can start writing here. We can start mentioning Jim. You see, we just created him and then I can tap here and I can tap. Okay. So with the mouse, it seems I cannot tap on these links on the mention. That's strange. But when I, when I use my finger, it's also not working. Aha. Uh -huh. So it seems in full screen and these links are not working and it seems there's no back option. So this means when I switch to a different page, it doesn't show me a back button so I can go back to the other page that I was to the previous page I was. So that's another downside I have to say. Here we have the favorites now. So you see it listed here. That really works like in Bear, for example, no taking app. And I just realized here we only have dots and we have a different color for tasks, as you can see here. So let's just take this off. Let's see what happens. It makes it green. So this is not as nice as it is on the Mac app, I have to say, because it's not very obvious. On the Mac app, we had a different sign for the task. Now let's just make final some final tests. We will just bring in Chrome and see if we can find a picture. Drag and hold and bring it in here. Okay, so it's easy to add pictures this way. That's something. Can we change size? Seems we can't change the size. It's stuck like this. Can we bring in a website? Yes, we can. That's a good solution here. But I wonder why we see it this way. Because in Rome Research, we would write it the same way, but it would just go away afterwards. Let's just switch back to the Mac version one second. And here it's already there. It's worked very well. And now we see the link here, click on this and it works, but this didn't work on the iPad. Uh -huh. So I understand now we have to leave the writing mode. So as soon the cursor is here, we can no longer navigate. So we have to get rid of the cursor in order to do this. We go back here and then, okay, this is, this is not a solution for me right now. So I think as a summary, is it something that I will use right now and replace the note taking apps I have in place? 
No. I think you saw the limitations as well. Uh, something that's missing for me is favorites. So I really like to have the option that I can have a focus list that I'm working on. Like in Rome Research, I can tag certain pages that I have on the site all the time. Then the iPad version is not very good compared to the Mac version. Um, as you saw, I have to tap away in order to access the links and so on. This is some strange behavior. What is really good though about Notes plan, and I can really see many people using it for, is the tight integration with Apple Calendar and Apple Reminders. It is really real-time synchronization. Whenever you add something, you saw it in the beginning. I had really fun creating these tasks. I like how it is reflected in the calendar we see there with the circle or with the checkbox, check mark when we finish tasks. However, again, this is not reflected on the iPad version. Then I think it's strange that we can build up a lot of pages and then we have to manually put them into folders. This is just manual work that I have to do in addition to creating pages. I think when, we, when it comes to using backlinks and all this, I think the real power is into building up automatic graphs like we have in Obsidian and in Rome Research, where we really don't have to worry about the folder structure and so on. Then what I think is really strange is the mentions versus hashtags. So far, I couldn't find the difference between those two. To me, mentions is really to mentioning some data that I have in my database, like a notion, for example. I can mention people, I can mention other databases, I can mention other pages and so on. Here, it is just another name for a tag. It is even listed here under tags. It's only tags, see? But it is split into mentions and hashtags. What I really liked here on top is with the tasks. This is something a lot of other tools lack, like Notion and Evernote. We can add these checkboxes into these note-taking apps. However, there's no way to find these tasks later on. And this is really a great solution that we have here, that we have a focus on tasks and also on our calendar that we take daily notes and we can always access the tasks and move them around like in Todoist. This is really a good approach and I really hope to see this in other note-taking apps too because if this is not coming to Notion or Evernote and so on, I think there's still no point for me to use checkboxes or any to-do lists in these kind of tools because it will be hard to find them later on. So this is really the innovation of note plan that I would say compared to other note taking apps and really the tight integration into my daily schedule and by syncing to my calendar and my reminders that I have access to this information via my Apple Watch, my iPhone and by just by looking at the reminders and my calendar. So I hope this gave you a bit of an insight into note plan if it is for you or not. If you're using note plan already, maybe I missed out some features. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Below. I'm happy to do follow-up videos. And as usual, this video is not sponsored by NotePlan or any other third party. It is sponsored by you, my Inner Circle members. Thank you very much if you're watching this for your consistent support. If you don't know what the Inner Circle is, it is a membership that you can join to access several online courses, monthly masterclasses. They are also recorded, so there are hours and hours that you can go through where I explain in detail how you can set up your own productivity system and many other things that just will make you more productive. If you want to learn what all is included in the Inner Circle, make sure you go to the description below this video and check it out. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you up next time.